my question is you is when you finally hang them up, are you going to miss it? Ain't gonna hang them up, brother. <laughs> Never retiring. <laughs> Never retiring. This is who I am. Point blank, period. I'm gonna be an old motherfucker at the bar. Get away from my seat, boy. Get out of here. I ain't never retired. When you were fighting in the UFC, you said, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna have no coach in my corner and have him take 20% of my check. He goes, uh-uh, I'm gonna have my girl give me water. Walk me through that, that thought process when you decided to do that. The thing with the coaches, man, is like, there's a lot of closeted haters. Like your producer, when you said you're fighter of the year and he started laughing. <laughs> and you were like, why do you laugh? Get him, why get him, Mike, laugh? get him, Mike. Is there anyone that you're kind of looking forward to getting to, to fight in bear knuckle one day yeah hey if they're showing up for a check that's on them i'm coming for your net oh it's 15 time world champion demetrius johnson you're listening to the body cast What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another beautiful episode of Mighty Cast. And our guest today, he needs no introduction, but I'm going to give him one anyways. The king of violence and the fighter of the year for Mighty Awards 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mac, the king of violence, Perry. What's going yeah, on, Mike? Let's go, baby. <laughs> Happy what? to be here. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Mike. I mean, first off, thank you so much for taking the time. I know it was your son's birthday this weekend. Uh, you guys were to the Magic Kingdom. And, man, what an amazing 2023. Uh, you know, I was there live when you fought Luke Rockhold for bare knuckle fighting. And I was I watched you fight Eddie Alvarez. Uh, absolutely amazing career in 2023. Uh, I want to give you a round of applause. How, how would you sum up 2023 for you, my friend? Uh, job's not finished. Uh, <laughs> we we still have we still have work to do. Uh, now that I am the king of violence, there's a lot of haters on the horizon, <laughs> and um, you know they're looking for a piece of that chip. And you know, I got a little bit too much dip on my chip. They they gonna come come for it, and I'm not trying to let them have none of it. I got a I got a lot to keep up with. Like if you saw my post about Disney World and the Magic Kingdom last night, I was saying how my kids will never understand what it means to me to take them up there again and again. And, uh, you know, and I said that they'll never understand because I'm never going to tell them. The little ungrateful motherfuckers <laughs> don't know how good they got it. <laughs> now, when you say all the haters, what do you mean haters? Right. I, as, as far as I've seen mm. on, you know, on the social media platforms, everybody is excited to see you win. Right. You I thought you were very successful as a mixed martial artist. Right. Like you mm. you did very well in the UFC. You have some amazing knockouts. You got a, a lot of bonus checks. And then you went to bare knuckle fighting and you have embodied this. You know, when when history, you know, when we look back in the history books and we look at bare knuckle fighting, we want to see a picture of just you. Right, just this is what bare knuckle fighting looks like, Lejeune. This is what peak performance looks like in bare knuckle fighting. So, where are the haters coming from? Right, uh, from all I see, we all want to see you win. T tell me where these haters, where, where's this energy coming from? Yeah, yeah, that's um, that's that's a good way to put it. But um, we, I had talked with Ariel Helwani, and he was like, you know, we can have ninety nine percent uh positive and then like you know it might be that one percent that we like to focus on sometimes but i feel like it's a little more than one percent there's a lot of uh closeted haters and um there's a lot of you know people who throw uh smart remarks or like your producer when you said you're fighter of the year and he started laughing <laughs> and you were like why do you laugh mike platinum <laughs> perry why do you laugh why, why is he laughing, ladies and gentlemen? I don't know why he's laughing. Get him. Why get him, Mike. Laugh? Get him, Mike. There's a little bit of closeted hate there, bro. <laughs> you know, they don't believe or or they can't understand something that they can't do themselves. They don't know why. You know, I make it look easy getting punched in the face, but it's not an easy job, baby. I'm just really good at it. Oh, Perry called you out, Michael. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Hey, hey, first of all, I'm just a Jewish white producer. Who cares what I think 
I don't know anything about fighting. I'm sorry, Mike Perry. Please forgive me. <laughs> hey, no, it's but, all good, man. But no, I, I, think, I did uh, think it was a good... At the end I of the day, I was like, no, this makes sense. D DJ sold me on it. I think uh, I just have some type of... Uh, well, especially in the bare knuckle fighting, it's just such a exhilarating, exciting thing and then when i go in there i don't play games like i don't try to beat around the bush like i bring it so i try to be the most exciting entertaining fighter i can be and i think that the champ here saw that yeah absolutely man like i said i was there live when you fought luke rockhold even when they made that match i was like wow this is a this is a banger fight two great athletes very successful in mixed martial arts now they're going in bare knuckle fighting I was there live you stopped him you know me and my teammates at the gym were talking about like, you know, I, I, I fight. And when you get knocked out, when you get tapped out, you self-consciously, you know, oh, I got caught. I'm done. Or if you get knocked out, it's like, oh, I didn't see the shot coming. But when you're like, you come back and you're like, dude, I'm, I'm done. Like, <laughs> I don't want anymore. That's a self-conscious that you yourself mentally have to check that box. Like, dude, I am done. And even when I talk to Luke Rockwood, he goes, dude, it's a different, it's a different animal. Until you get in there, you do it. It's a different animal, but you keep on doing it and you keep on succeeding with flying colors. And then you fight Eddie Alvarez, which is another dog. And, you know, you broke his orbital and he goes, dude, I, I got to stop. I, I, I got to check out. So that's why you got my fight of the year, because what you did to two ex-world champions, right? And these guys are all mentally tough and you broke them, you know, from f***ing them up. So that's where you got my But Mike, I want to uh, walk me through the very beginning of your infancy stage of mixed martial arts or just getting martial arts in general did you do you know backyard fighting like Jorge Masvidal or did you what was your upbringing into sports you play football I, I'm sure you play football I'm sure you probably hit that eye gap and ran some motherfuckers over talk me through yeah, the beginning yeah bro uh and and real quick just a little side note as as you were saying that I was thinking man Mighty Mouse versus John Dodson Bare knuckle would be oh, fucking. My hands, he, my hands are brittle, and I like oh, to. Oh, I don't want to hear it, dude. <laughs> you think this shit don't hurt my hands? This shit kills my hands, but I practice for it. My finger was ripped open so big when I stuck it through Eddie's face. Ooh. But, but let me say, uh, yes, I played. You know, I rode my bike all over the all over the hood. When I was young, 20 miles a day, man, we, like I saw this meme on Instagram, like our parents just don't know how far we rode them bikes, bro. Like we was out there and you remember the 25 cent barrel juices and, you know, we used to ride to the store and find like a quarter in the street. Like, oh, I'm riding to the store, bro. I'm going to get a juice and a bag of chips for like 50 cents. Those were my, you know, my my startup days. Times ain't like that no more. The kids is, they got it different now. Uh, I played, we played football, tackling the grass, two two hand touching the street. Uh, we boxed. I I was a big YouTube like I didn't post videos on YouTube. I would just watch videos on YouTube of all these fighters. Uh, um. Mike Tyson, John Jones. I mean, John Jones was a little bit later, maybe. Um, you, I probably watched a lot of you. Um, and I just, I practiced with guys that, you know, we used to do, like, I used to go to school with a, the drawstring backpack and it had like gloves and maybe a mouthpiece in it. Mm. And like after school, we would fight on the soccer field and we would <laughs> practice and train. We would, I would watch Anderson Silva videos on YouTube and practice the techniques we used to do. We used to drink uh, blasts when I was like, you know, 18 or something. I don't know. Blast is like a, a four loco times 10 or something. Damn. It's, like four loco. Yeah, it's pretty sick. And we used to drink those, and then we would, like, start in a deep triangle choke and be like, all right, ready, <laughs> set, get out. And then, like, I'd almost be out and then be, like, waking up. <laughs> oh, shit, you got me. Damn. <clears throat> you know, we used to do all types of shit.
What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This podcast is sponsored by Price Pick. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Price Pick is a daily fantasy. You got to have some skill. Pick them. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the thing I love about Price Pick is that you're not playing against, is this team going to win? Is this, or uh, uh, thousands of people around the world. You are playing against the projections. Now, we have football season going on. We also have mixed martial arts. We also have college football season going on. Now, let's say, they're projecting that Geno Smith is going to throw 268 passing yards. Hmm. Who is he playing? Arizona Cardinals. You know what? That defense hasn't been looking real strong. So, you know what? I'm going to go with more. Or if they're going against the San Francisco 49ers, which their defense has been looking straight peak this season, I'm going to go with less. So, there's got to be... There is some strategic way of how you make your picks now ladies and gentlemen all you got to do is go to your app store whether you're android or iphone user iphone guy download price picks and when you do that make sure you use my promo code mighty they will match up to a hundred dollars of your deposits now ladies and gentlemen you got to check to see where price picks is available in your state unfortunately it's not in washington state but don't you worry mighty cast is produced in arizona so you best believe the mighty cast is making the best picks at the right place which is price picks let's get back to our video with our special guest mike perry now so Okay. All right. Uh, oh, that's another that's thing too. You, uh, real quick, my bad. You said it. The UFC thing, you know, you said uh, my career, you know, this and that. The fights were good. And, you know, I always just tried to bring it. But I feel like the UFC was a big learning curve for me. I was kind of young in there. And I know that, you know, like when did you go pro? When did you just start knocking heads and just be the best? Like, did you have a learning curve ever or you were just always on top? Yeah, I think my learner curve <clears throat> was from my amateur days. Like, I had a lot of amateur fights. I think, if I recall, I think I had maybe like 15 amateur fights. I had 20. 20, yeah. So, I, I had 15. And, and my amateur career was like, I'll, Matt will maybe do one MMA, one kickboxing, MMA, shoot boxing, MMA, Muay Thai, MMA, boxing, then a lot of MMA. Then I go to jiu-jitsu tournaments and then eventually I went pro as, you know, semi-pro and I would fight in Alaska a AFC. And then when I knocked out Jesse Brock, that's when I got my introduction into WC. And then, yeah, I would say there's a little learning curve. Like, you know, when you get underneath the big bright lights, there's a point in time where it's like you're fighting and I'm thinking to myself, I was okay. You know, I think I'm gonna go for my first submission when I was in the UFC, when I fought John Morag and see, I was okay, I'm gonna step over for an arm bar. This is risky, let me see if I get it. And I get it, when I heard the pop, pop, I was like, ooh, I just popped his arm. And then after that, that's when I, I started to kind of come my own. And then, you know, once I fought Rod Tank, you know, all the fights in the UFC when I defended the belt, once I fought Rod Tank, that's when I was like, okay, I am fully here. Like, I am fully engaged with what's going on. I see everything. I feel everything. Shit, I smell everything. And I hear everything. And then I fought, you know, Adriano the second time, the third time, and here I am now. So I feel like I'm at my peak state now mentally, but not physically. Because as we get older, I'm 37, your body doesn't recover like it used to. I can't do the things like I used to do, right? Mm. So that that's what I was saying my learner curve was. But like for you, I felt like you would bring it. Like beautiful elbows, you know, back and forth fights. And from when you're talking about your childhood, so did you play any sports in high school or was it all just, you know, drinking that blast and then, all right, give me the triangle choke. Let me see if I get out. Like, did you have like a wrestling career in high school, basketball, football, or was it all just, hey, glove up, shut up out in the soccer field? Man, the, my grades, you know, really. <laughs> really <not. If> I, <laughs> He's like my grades. I didn't do my homework, bro. You know, and if I did, I would have wrestled and I would have been, I would have went to college mm. and who knows, man, I could have been like a, a Bo Nickel or something. And, uh, you know, speaking of him, I feel like we have one of those guys. I've been, I kind of wanted to give him a shout out cause he's been working for a long time. His name is Bubba Sheffield. That's our Bo nickel in my opinion. Mm. And he's been wrestling at fusion XL with all the MMA guys. They got a lot of guys coming up. Maybe, you know, uh, Phil Rowe. I think he's like three, mm. 
three and one. He might have lost a decision in the UFC um, to Neil Magny, maybe. But mm. uh, Bubba Sheffield, man, he's he. You know, the thing about a guy like that is. I wouldn't say he keeps his head down, but he like stays out of trouble. Uh, he stays out of altercations, doesn't have a big mouth on him. And, and you know, maybe that's why he hasn't been seen uh, quite a, as much. But he he works. He wins. He's a wrestler. He keeps dominant positions. He doesn't get in bad positions. You know what I'm saying? And. Mm. And I just, I've been thinking about my boy Bubba Sheffield, bro. Got to give him a shout out, man. Well, shout out to Bubba. Shout out to Bubba. Okay, let's transition. So you're in high school. When you get out of high school, you don't go to college. When was your first, like, big MMA fight? Like, walk me through that process of, like, hey, you get out of high school. You're like, okay, what am I going to do with my life? I'm sure you got a job. And then get walk me through when you got into the big stage of the UFC. Because I want to talk about the UFC career when you, you know, how you felt about being in that organization and then leaving it and then your stardom, you know, I feel like you're a, a star in, 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 uh, in the UFC because you had a great personality, you had some great fights, but then when you transition to bare knuckle fighting, it's like you're selling pay-per-views, you're signing, you're getting seven-figure checks, you were a copy panda, you're on a yacht, I, I, so walk me through the beginning of once you started doing mixed martial arts and then into the big show of the UFC. Yeah, I you know I had some big amateur fights that had you know my first one was like it was like this tent in uh <laughs> it, it, it might have no it was like a big circus tent in Lansing Michigan outside of like a Hooters behind the Hooters and there was like there was like a couple thousand people in this circus tent this was my first fight bro I fought like a zero and three guy mm. and like I beat him in like a minute and um. And, you know, I had a couple amateur fights like that that had big crowds. And then I just always thought I was going to get I always had this idea. I was like, when I make it to the UFC stage and we do the face offs and the weigh ins, I'm going to dodge this dude's handshake. And be like, thought you had a friend, boy. And <laughs> I did that shit. I did that shit. And then, like, I kind of ran out of ideas what to do. <laughs> but I had that idea for so long. And then I I, met, I fulfilled it. I made it happen. Um, So that was against Hung Yu Lim on uh, UFC 202, McGregor Diaz 2, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I beat Lim in the first. I knocked him down like three times. And then I fought. I went overseas like a month later and fought Daniel Rodriguez or... Uh, Danny Roberts, uh, he was 13 and one at the time. And then we had a banger of a fight. That's like my fight that I would like to watch. Like if I tell anybody, like I was like free in that fight. It was my first overseas fight. I, it was like, I was establishing my dreams. I came in with the face tap for the first time mm. and, uh, and I just banged it out. Like me and me and Roberts just fought. So that's a good fight that people should watch is Mike Perry versus Danny Roberts. And, uh, you know, um, and then and then there was uh, Alan Joe Band was like a month later. So mm -hmm. I fought three times in Damn. Like four months. Yeah, I fought and fought and fought. And then and then Joe Band was just smart and he just poked me and like. Even when I thought I heard him, like, you know, no excuses, man. He just, that's that's one thing that helped me in the transition to Bare Knuckle is like, you know, I, I felt like even subconsciously, I just kind of always tried to find some justification as to why or, you know, what was going on, what what was going wrong, what was what's going right, mm. you know, and then I just started focusing on what's going right. You know, how do I make it more right? How do I make it better? Uh, no excuses. You know, you go out there and and I try to fight in a way, especially in bare knuckle. I try to fight in a way that, you know, one is entertaining Two, uh, it's the platinum pressure. You know, I'm not I'm not afraid of it, bro. Like I, I can take a fucking hit and because you don't feel it till later anyway. So mm. I just I'll feel it later and then. <laughs> mean it now while i'm in the ring with you yeah well it's crazy so you fought three times 
in three months in a span of period in your first big organization it was like you. it was like three and a half four months but it was three times in the same as soon as i got in yeah it was Damn. like three and a half months See, sometimes when you do that, like I feel like sometimes when you like when I've been following your bare knuckle fighting career, you have time to prepare for these fights, right? Like you did Michael Vona Page, and you did another one, then you did Luke Rockhold, and then you did Eddie Alvarez. I felt like there was a good buildup, like good two to three months before you were going to fight these gentlemen. But when you're going back to back like that, especially overseas, and you're you're fighting these guys, they're they're more they're fresher. As you, I guess you can say, because you think about it, you fight this guy, you win, and next month you fight this guy, you win, then you fight uh, Jablon, you know, the third or fourth month. Those guys have all been on ice just sitting there watching you put the work in. And then when you get to the third one, you're probably mentally taxed out. You're like, I've, I've what, what more what more can I do, right? Like, I've already got this check, this check, I'm going to get this check. So I think mentally, and it could be even physically, you know, I, I don't know where your mind is, at that time, but for me, when I sit down and listen, I'm like, God damn, they put this man to work. We call them slave shifts, baby. Um, but I, I, it seems that you got through it. Um, okay, let's like, if you had to take what was actually, you know, I want to go back. I think what caught my eye the most when you were fighting in the UFC, you said, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna have no coach in my corner. Have him take twenty percent of my check. He goes, uh, uh-uh. uh. I'm gonna have my girl give me water. I'm gonna tell her, hey baby, how you doing? Keep 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 your hands up, baby. Here, drink some water, baby. Walk me through that epic, <laughs> <laughs> that epic meme that you did because I laugh. I was sitting there and I looked at my wife and I was like, baby, I should have you in my corner. She goes, that would be great. And I was like, nah, I can't. I gotta have that. I gotta, I gotta stay focused. Walk me through that that thought process when you decided to do that. Cause I loved it when you said it. I was like, huh? That's how he feels. He's gonna make it happen. And you did, and you won. You won multiple times. Tell him, you tell know, him platinum. Um, the thing with the coaches, man, is like, I mean, you you're you're built in with your coaches. You probably had them a while. You know them personally, and and you know through through your work. Uh, but I was I was having ups and downs. That I felt like you know maybe some of the excuses I might have had was like, man, you know. You got something like you got something to say when I'm doing it right or like when I win, <laughs> but then when I'm when I'm f-ing, I'm sitting there in the fight, like come on, give me something, dude. Tell mm. me what the f- you do. <laughs> and you know, I'm not realizing maybe I'm not hearing, or maybe they're not saying, maybe I'm I'm not hearing because they're not saying. I don't know. It's like it's a fight, and no one's gonna f-ing fight for you. The work is done inside of the gym well before you ever make it to the arena so Mm. like you know uh and some of the you know some of the coaches not saying that mine were this way yeah but some of the coaches they they're like oh i've been in the game i'm gonna get one of these new fresh fishes coming up in here trying to be a fighter Mm. i'm gonna intimidate them Mm. and then i'm like yeah Give me 20%, bitch, because I'll be your ass right now in the gym because I'm your coach and I know how to do it. But like, but not me. F*** that, bro. I was always a fighter. And I'm like, I fight for money for a reason. You think I'm just going to give you some? (laughs) Bitch, you got to fight me for this money. Oh, God. See, I love now, it. Now I be hooking my coach up, dog. I take care of my boy JT. Shout out Technique Boxing. Mm. I hook, I, you know, I hook it up, bro. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This podcast is sponsored by G Fuel. Now, G Fuel has amazing products. One of my favorite products is the Energy Formula. How do I like to enjoy my G Fuel? I'll tell you how I like to enjoy it. I like to take my energy formula G Fuel when I am going to the gym to start throwing some iron around. Now, G Fuel comes in a lot of delicious flavors. Right here, we have the Sage Mode, which is Naruto Shippuden. And then we also have another flavor, which is their Blue Ice. Very delicious. And then finally, one of their peak 
peak performance or one of their best selling products with which is the clickbait g fuel now if you guys want to take your you know energy level in the gym to a whole new level go to gfuel.com make sure you use my promo code mighty that will save you 20 percent on your complete order and if you can try out the mega man blue blueberry slushy it's absolutely amazing it's my favorite flavor also in the cans Thank you to G4 for sponsoring this video. We are getting back to Mike Platinum Perry. Well, I think I think you you pretty much gave context to that situation that you were in, right? Like like you said, me and Matt have a long history relationship. We've been working together for 18 years. So, and when I'm in the middle of the fight, he's able to give me a, a constructive criticism to help me get to the W. To when you were in there, you're like, give me something. Tell me what I need to do. And he wasn't able to give it to you. So he's like, nah, I'm done with that. So now you have a great relationship with your coach, JT. And now you guys have obviously been very successful in the bare knuckle fighting and it's working out good. So I'm glad you found a coach that you can trust. And I'm sure every once in a while you might have your girl in there give you water, tell you look good, keep it up, baby, keep your hands up. Um, but I just love that. I just love when you did that. I was like, this gentleman is going against the cuff because you never see, I think the very first time I didn't have Matt in my corner is when I started fighting one championship and I had my teammates there. And then you're right. Everything that you do is in the gym leading up there. And then you have your team. I had my teammates to remind me to stay on track. Hey, you're doing this. Hey, you do, you need to do X, Y, and Z. So I, I, it's one of my favorite things of your, of your career, along with your fighting is when you came out and you said that I was like, uh, uh, coach ain't getting 20%. My girl going to help me get this W and she did. Okay. Let's talk about the transition from you leaving mixed martial arts for bare knuckle fighting, right? Like I said, I thought you were very successful as a mixed martial artist. A lot of wins in the UFC, a lot of bonus checks. Why why leave mixed martial arts for bare knuckle fighting? Like what was that train of thought in your mind to lead MMA? Because when people say, dude, you should do bare knuckle fighting. I'm like, dude, I love the grapple. I love the kick. I love the elbow. I love, you know... The wrestling aspect and if i take away all of my greatest gifts of transition between all the martial art forms and don't use my hands i don't think i'll be as good i don't think you know i would be as dominant as i would have been as i am in mixed martial arts but for you you've been able to excel at bare knuckle fighting right but walk me that transition period where you're like i'm leaving mma for bare knuckle fighting yeah um well real quick i just want to say that that like that old coach at that time, like we had ups and downs, <laughs> but that's my guy. I still rock with him. We have been rocking together for a long time. I still go work with the MMA guys because their boxing might be a little different. Oh, 1000%. And, uh, yeah, for sure. So I definitely go get some work. There's definitely some good people over there, good bodies to train with. People try to get me and, um, and, you know, it's just, it was my coach at that time. He just kind of wanted me to take down or to grapple mm -hmm. and like, and we would train it so much that I feel like, and I, and I was good at it in certain ways, in certain positions, but like, I've always been this boxer. Mm. I just want to brawl, stand and bang and, and, and just, you know, work the work. I'm mostly a hands guy, like even... swift point fighter i'm kind of a crazy brawler a little bit and I, I like to actually you know how we do in bare knuckle fighting where we toe the line and we meet mm -hmm. in the middle mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. fight so like the transition from mma and then there was a lot of like influencer boxing where these these mma fighters were getting to do these big boxing matches and i'm like dude i got the best hands like I I was like, you know, and the check was easy to pick. It was like, oh, yeah, I'm going, I'm going to bare knuckle to fight for real. And a lot of people are scared of this shit. They don't want to leave the comfort of the UFC. UFC makes it, you know, really comfort. Like, if you think about the, the old days when you were coming up on the scene and you would be in the back training or or like warming up 
for your fight later that night. You might be back there for like three, four hours or or even like you would go out and watch some of the other fights on the card and then you would go to the back and you would like start warming up and stretching and you'd been back there for hours and uh, you're getting ready to fight and it, it might be like a like a tent in a parking lot and you're back there with no shoes on on the concrete like it's just ratchet back in the day just you're like i don't care about anything but going in there and beating this person up and and protecting myself but you know entertaining the crowd and so the transition from from mma to to street fighting bare knuckle boxing was like you know it was heaven sent for me i really you know i gotta say it's kind of my thing no and that's and that's one thing uh, sorry dj but but that's one thing i wanted to say touching back on on me being surprised by the fighter of the year dj t tell my pair right now who do i compare him to in the bare knuckle fighting world in past podcasts this isn't this isn't me uh sucking up to him on the spot what what do i say dj I think you were uh, comparing him to like how Jake Paul has embodied the influence no, of no, boxer. That, no, no, no. What, I, I, what do I call? Well, no, fuck what do you I call? Do it, I call then. him the Muhammad Ali of bare knuckle boxing. That is what I said. <laughs> Calls you the Muhammad yeah, Ali so, of bare knuckle yeah, fighting. So, Michael, dr Michael drinks a little bit when we're down here in the <laughs> studio. Okay, so sometimes I can't tell what he's talking about. But Michael wanted to talk to you about uh, the potential that you could have fought. You could have stepped in for KSI against Logan Paul because no, no, you were so it, there. It'll be, be for uh, right if you, Dylan Dennis uh, backed out. Dylan right. Dennis. Yeah, 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 but you know, you know. It's all right to, to what Demetrius said as well, you know, the the Jake Paul thing. I mean, he's getting a lot of attention. His last knockout was really good. He uppercutted that guy. But it's like, come on, man. There was – how good was that guy then that he got dropped <laughs> that first uppercut like that? Like, come on. There's no way that's happening to me, bro. Now, would you – eat that uppercut. Would you – would you – be interested in doing like okay you're gonna say you talk to bare knuckle fighting like hey i'm done with uh let me take a little break from bare knuckle fighting when you guys have a, a, a nice fight i'll come back to that if you have the opportunity to fight one of the influencer and in, like jake paul logan paul would you do it well i was there for logan paul they paid me to fight him if dylan didn't fight and then they fought you know, they. I was ready. I had my gloves on. I was in the back warming up. Whoa, I was like, wait, hand. You, you know. said you, you said that they paid you as a backup. A backup. Yep. So mm -hmm. they paid you as a backup, and you're in the back warming up. They didn't show you just in case Dylan didn't show up. That that's what I'm here. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Look at my man getting checks. Oh. See, I, I, I'm going to tangent. This so is Jake Paul said it too, right? Yeah. Jake Paul used my name, said I was the backup, didn't pay me, didn't bring me out, didn't have me. And then Logan Paul paid me, but then they didn't give me their, and I, I might have had a couple like, you know, clips that week uh, through things that happened, but they didn't want to show me any, uh, which is fine. Yeah. Um, but it's like, you guys keep using me like this. But then, you know, you somebody's got to fight me. And now Jake knocked out <laughs> that dude that was in Orlando. And I'm like, hi, you know, you want the money fight, you said. And, you know, people think I'm saying bare knuckle, but I'm free to roam. I'm free to reign. You know, just I can move around. Bare knuckle has, has left me available and open like that. But I am exclusive with them to where the, you know, they... They're talking the most money anyways. Yeah, yeah. They're, you're exclusive with them when it comes to bare knuckle fighting, but they are giving you the free range of like, hey, you know what? If you go do the influencer boxing, we wish you we wish you, we wish you, luck, but please come back to us. And if anything, it's going to elevate your brand, and it's also going to bring eyeballs because when they do the lead up to your to your uh, boxing match with the, the Paul brothers, they're going to show some of your bare knuckle fighting content, which is going to help elevate bare knuckle fighting, right? I love... Mm -hmm where the martial arts era is, right? If you go back to when GSP, Anderson Silva, Matt Hughes, Tim Sylvia, mm -hmm. you had UFC, you had Pride, you had Strike Force, Lead XC, you had all these other ones. And all these athletes stayed underneath their contract. Now we're in a stage where 
athletes are testing free agency. You look at Francis Nagano. He just lined up another big fight against Anthony Joshua. Here you are mm. at the Misfit, the zone boxing, or throw the where the hell it was at. You get a check. You're on standby to do a boxing match against local apologist case Dylan Dennis as it came out. You have all these athletes testing free agency. I just absolutely love to hear that you got paid as a backup and you didn't have to fight. Like I told everybody, the best check yeah, in athlete. Yeah, but it was rough, dude. What it do you mean was it was rough? rough? It was because I put the same amount of effort in mm. to everything throughout that week. I dealt with all their bullshit. All ah. the they tried to they tried to throw curveballs at me all week long. Uh, you know, in the mental game, the mental prep, the weight, the you know, the diet, the just. Even a moment of dieting, like you start to feel it, your brain switches on and get your body in this mode. And then it's like, I'm in the back and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to fight. I'm going to fight. Let's go. I'm going to go fight. And then, and then I don't get to do it. And then I see the crowd. I went out for the main event. And I'm like, damn, man, this crowd deserved this fight with me. <laughs> yes, they, you know what? Yes, they f***ing did. Because what Dylan Dennis did was a disgrace. That's what that, that is f***ing right. And I think if you and Logan would have fought, that would have been an absolute f***ing banger compared to what Dylan did. Because I actually covered that fight. And I was like, what, what is this, right? Like, that's the one thing for me. It's like, yeah. I, I, love the, I love to hear that you gave it everything, right? Even though you weren't the main, you know, the main attraction of that fight, you probably put way more work in the gym preparing to fight Logan Paul than Dylan Dennis did, right? So I can I see, ready, man. I, I can see that kind of like you're gutted, right? Because you're out there, amazing crowd, you know it, the fight's going to be a great fight, you know, viral, whatever it may be, and that should have been you in there, not Dylan Dennis. So don't worry, hey, hey, you it's still you still get opportunity, man. And then you know it wasn't long after I beat up Eddie. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's, I was going to say, Mike, to let us know. So we so we got robbed of what would have been a much better fight. You versus Logan Paul. Tell us right now, what would that fight have looked like? Let, let us imagine it and get to enjoy it just through your words. What do you think that fight would have looked like if you got in there with Logan Paul? Um, You know, so he did a good job as far as, you know, he keeps his range. He plays the... You know, he'll touch you with a long jab and he'll pull back and uh, try to hit. He's got long arms so he can loop hooks over the top if you're trying to get inside. Uh, you know, Dylan Dennis was tough as far as he took a lot of attrition uh, that added up over time. And, you know, he he landed a couple punches. They weren't great or like, you know, a couple got through that that looked like they hit Logan. And just the way that I saw that, you know, uh, I, I always say that the guy standing across from me is a, is someone that, you know, kind of God, you know, we, it, it's a battle. And the person standing across from you deserves to be there. So if it was me facing off with Logan and that, you know, he he did good. But I think my ability to take shots and hit him back and then put pressure on him, put him in the corner, put him up against the ropes, cut him off with angles, overwhelm him. I would have probably let some combinations go that the ref would have been thinking about, you know, oh, I got to I got to save this kid. If he didn't <laughs> go down already, you know, he's got to stop him because I'm just hitting him so much like Benavidez, you know, with that combo. Bah, 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 bah. Mm hmm. Too I, much, too much pressure. Jake, he's I think he's a little better than his brother. He's yes. got more power. Uh, he doesn't box as swift. He's more down to get into a fight. I think that's a really good fight. I don't know why they're trying to duck or dodge. Uh, you know, it's because they can't get a knockout in that fight. They Jake's hit me with great shots before. Not saying that he's not better than he was when I sparred him. He hit me with shots, and I just kind of, oh, yeah, come here. I smiled at him and kept coming. <laughs> now, okay, well, I hope you get that fight because I think it would be great. And if you do get that fight, you best believe the Mighty Gaming channel will be covering it and all your other fights as well. <clears throat> okay, let's transition. So you leave the UFC, you're in bare-knuckle fighting, you're on top of the world. Obviously, you probably made way more money 
in bare knuckle fighting than you have in mixed martial arts. Is that is that correct? Yeah, I mean, it, everything works out with God, man. I mean, God's always given me enough and plenty. And, and now I'm in a position in my life where I'm, I'm like, damn, I really have a lot. Like, I really, <laughs> I, I think I made it. I think I made it, bro. I just got the new plaid, the new X model plaid. Okay. Brand new, has like 30 miles on it. Oh, man, that car is amazing. Uh, I Shout have- out to Tesla. Elon Musk. I'm happy to hear it, baby. I'm happy to hear it. So we're we're like you're doing the Bernardo fighting. You're looking to get a fight potential with Jake Paul, Logan Paul. You're open for whatever. Now, what is you know you're working with Copy Panda. I know you know Josh has always got some up his sleeve working on different business ventures. What does Mike Perry want to work on? Like what are you know, for me, right now I'm in this transition period where I'm focused on building my brand, focus on building the Mighty Cast, right? Like I have uh, I have goals where I want to one day have it like the Shea Shea Room, have it like the Joe Rogan podcast where we fly guests in, we sit there, we chop it up for an hour, two hours or whatnot, drinking some delicious tequila. What goals do you see outside of combat? Like, do you have anything that you want to try to achieve outside of, you know, you know, fighting? You know, obviously you have a beautiful family. You're raising your kids. You're at Magic Kingdom. What are some of the hobbies and things that you want to turn into revenue after you're done fighting? Yes. Um, Yes, sir. I mean, that's always a challenge with fighting because it's like whatever amount of work I have to put into anything, it just seems so strenuous compared to like a physical exercise, which is good for my mental health which is one of the main reasons I do exercise is it, if I'm having bad days, I'm like, fuck it. I need to go to the gym. And as soon as I work out, I'm like on my way home and feeling better about myself. So, you know, it's just, and, and that check, that fight check, there's nothing in the world like it. Like if you think about it, I know there was time leading up to the fight, uh, months of training, whatever, but four minutes twice last year, <laughs> Four minutes. I f-ing made so much money in four minutes, dude. There's nothing like it that compares to it at all. Nothing. That so is true. That is true. It's brands. It's sponsors. It's my own business. It's got to be something. There's real estate. I, I'm, you know, I'm working on that. Uh, I, oh my god, I had an idea last night. And I was going to like text my my people like, yo, if I was going to do this, what is the right way to do it? And, and I'll break it down. But um, so I've been picking up golf. I mm. really like I, I always golfed. It's just another sport for me. So I like all sports. I, you know, I just more free time. But man, playing 18 holes of golf is like peaceful mm. and it's enjoyable and i want and you know we said on the court on january 1st on the course uh sometimes i hit it good sometimes i hit it better you know it's <laughs> yeah, i know that i know sometimes you got a good swing sometimes you swing you just use whip it we call it what the f- yeah, so like what the f- keep up with the consistency so i've been working on my golf a lot lately since Pretty much the beginning of the year, I got blisters on my hands. I might go golf today, practice hey. some shots with my boxing coach as well, because he's a scientific guy, but he can't golf to save his ass. And it's the one sport he can't <laughs> do. So we got to practice. And I was thinking, man, I was like, man, if I was going to give my girl a good amount of money so she could just start something for herself, she could, mm. she could up with it she could lose some of it she could misplace some of it she could buy the wrong things with it she could make her mistakes in order to learn because that's kind of like like fighting that learning curve you get in these battles i always told myself as a fighter just make it hard on yourself go hard can take all the hard fights fight like you mean it keep trying if it doesn't work out just keep going no quit relentless warrior and eventually you get into this age of wisdom where you're like ah you know 
now I'm, I take it as it's the easiest job in the world. Yep. I'm like, ah, yeah, I get to go work on my mental health. I do a little sprinting. Uh, and then I put this pressure on people. Ooh, so what? You hit me. I could take it, bitch. And I'm going <laughs> to, you're not going to take it. You're going to drown. I'm going to drown you and smother you and punch you in the face. And I win because I fight smarter, not harder. Believe it or not, I get hit. It's the smarter approach for me. I love that. I love that. I think you're right. I, I, I tell, I even told Henry Suhudu this. I was like, man, fighting is the easiest way to make money for, for me. Because, you know, when you have to, you know, when, when we started this uh, podcast, right, Mighty Cast, it's like you have to put a lot of effort into finding the right guests, having the right conversation, make sure you have the best quality image of the camera. You know, you have to invest back into your brand on a different level instead of how us as athletes, we are typically used to getting a paycheck by getting there and taking punches or giving an ass whooping, right? And nothing's going to give you that type of velocity of money once you fight, right? Like you say, you fought for, you fought, last year for four minutes and it was the most money you ever made, right? You're never going to be able to find a job out there where you're going to do something for four minutes. You're going to make, you know, six to seven figure right. check. It's just not going to happen. But then, you know, I sit there and I talk to my wife. I was like, man, I'm never going to make the same amount of money I did when I fight. She goes, yeah, you won't if you have that attitude. But if you have the mm -hmm. attitude that, you know, you can and you slowly start picking what you slowly start, you know, you turn on the faucet, every drip, that bucket's going to keep on filling up, filling up. And I, when you said that, like fighting is the easiest way to make money because anything else is very strenuous. I, I connected with that because it's very hard. You know, when I've been fighting for 18 years, you've been fighting your whole life. You're still going, right? You're still going. You're a little bit younger than me. And now trying to find different avenues to create that revenue in to when you do leave fighting, you're okay. Now, but you still got 10 years. What? I am 37, Mike. I am 37. Romero, Dan Henderson, Anderson Silva, 47 years old. Yeah. All of them are still fucking phenomenal. Yeah, I, I know, man. But I think for me, you know, and I, I'm not saying I'm done. I'm just saying like where I'm at in my stage of my career and my life is. You thought you were closer. Yeah, I, not that. It's just when I, you know, I have three kids in the last 18 years, <clears throat> you know, I buried my mm. sister. I was training for my fight. My mom got cancer. I was training for my fight. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, now w my in-laws are a little bit older and he's going through some procedures. Guess what? I'm not training for a fight. So I can be here. I can say, hey, babe, go take care of your dad. Go take care of your dad. I got the three children. I could not imagine telling my wife, hey, you, you can't go be at your dad's appointment because I got to train for this fight. Because I know mentally that's how I am as an athlete. Like when it's when it's training camp time, I'm not the only person who's in training camp. My wife's in training camp. My kids are in training camp because they go off my schedule. And I don't want that for my kids right now. I don't want that. Like I'm at every single jujitsu practice. I'm picking them up from school. And if I was in training camp, I can't do that. I want to get to be a dad and I want to get to be an athlete once. But I'm an athlete, a high level athlete for 18 years already. Now I want right. to see if I could be a high level father for, you know, Good for you. My, man, my, my, my daughter's, you know, powerful. five. So it, it's a very hard thing and I struggle with it. I, it's, it's, it's a struggle because as an athlete, I want to still go out there and be like, pop, 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 pop. But there's a time where you got to turn the lights off. So, okay, that, that time in my life has, has passed me by. So it's very, it's very, um, it's a struggle as an athlete. And you hear other athletes talk about it as well. My question is you is when you finally hang them up, are you going to miss it? Ain't gonna hang them up, brother. <laughs> Never retiring. Never retiring. This is who I am. Point blank, period. I will always, I'm gonna be an old motherfucker at the bar knocking people out. Get, get away from my seat, boy. Get out of here. Get out of here. I ain't never retiring. Oh, I'm God. never hanging them up. I'm all, I'm bare knuckle, baby. We ain't gotta hang them up. Yeah. This shit's automatic. I love it. I love it. I mean, there will come a point in time where you will be fighting for no checks because ain't nobody going to pay you when you're 85 years old, Mike. And you'll be like, oh, you want to you, you get him up right now and see what happens? Hold on, Ric Flair, baby. <laughs> <laughs> He's like 80 years old, bro. He's still out here back slapping chests for, for money. Yeah, that is true. I think he's with AEW now. Yeah, he was at AEW. And that's a, the that's a thing. I, you know, if your body could withstand the 
the the training and the, and the battles and all that stuff. More power to you. And it, like I said, I, I watched it. I watched a podcast this morning, and they were talking about you always want to see everybody win, right? And I always want to see all the athletes, not just in MMA, but any athlete, football, basketball, NHL, you name it, bare knuckle fighting. I want to see every athlete get a big slice of pumpkin pie. Because in the, the day, you know, this is what we have. And I hope that you, I wish and I hope that you have, I don't hope, I know you're going to have a long, extensive, amazing career, keep on signing checks, knocking out people. And I can't wait to see what you do outside of, you know, combat, because I think you have a very uh, powerful story and I think you carry yourself very well. Uh, Michael, uh, not Michael, Juan's over, Mike, where, where can the people, you know, find you? What do you got in the project? What do you want to let people know? This is your opportunity to tell people what you got coming up, brother. Thank you, bro. Um, really, it means a lot, man. You're you're a legend, uh, one of the goats for sure. You know, you and John Jones are like the top two goats out there. And let's get better than that. And then it's me. So it's John Jones. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and uh, you know, and maybe you know, maybe Mike Tyson, and you know, that's those guys are in their own lane. John Jones is kind of in that lane, but. You know, I want to, f- I, I think as I get older, more dad mode, I think I'm figuring, you know, it's going to lead to something. I definitely have a lot of faith. I definitely run on faith. Um, I just kind of leave myself open to be led. And, um, you know, I try to be a leader as well. I lead the people that are around me, but I, I'm, I'm looking for a higher power to lead me and into something that I can make a difference and, and change the world for the better. And, um, you know, you know, something, uh, just give back to the community, uh, find a way to make a difference and, and positive, uh, you know, I do at the boxing gym, like, a you know, a lot of people look up to me like kids and, and other stuff. So I, I, I'm trying to fix things and make myself more mainstream sometimes and and just be less of a young idiot and more of a wise uh, warrior, if you will. And, um, you know, what, what's that thing? Zun Sao, General Zun Sao say it is better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. <laughs> I think that's true. And I don't think you're an idiot. I think the way you've been able to navigate your career, because a lot of people are scared to leave that big promotion. People, A lot of people are scared to leave the UFC. They think there's no money outside of the UFC, <laughs> right? You look at, I mean, I go on a handful. You look at Kyojo Horiguchi, Sergio Pettis, myself, Mike Perry, uh, you know, Francis Nagano, the list just goes on. And all of us have been able to be successful outside of that. And I think uh, you are a living statement, a living proof of that. Um, so I, I, I agree with you. I'd rather be a warrior in a garden than a, a gardener in a war. Uh, when when do you want to come back to combat? Like, are we, we going to see you first quarter, 2024, second quarter, third, fourth? When When is the king of violence going to be able to grace us with more of that violence in the circle or whatever the hell that shape is in bare knuckle fighting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a squared circle. It is a square on the outside with a circle of metal barbed wire on the inside. Mm. Uh, and uh, I, they were there was talks of February – um damn that's next month mike (laughs) there was talks there was talks of uh a couple fights in one night i don't know what's going on with these these silly things but then there's there's other calls as well possibly uh april and may it's possible that we're we'll see so i don't know where is april first or second quarter uh, that's second quarter, January and March. Probably second quarter. Yeah. So, you know, first is the worst, second is the best. It don't matter. I'm the one with the treasure chest. <laughs> you know, you should write a f-ing kids novel. You should write a kids novel. I think you'll be able to do. Oh, like- I, that's funny because I was like, <laughs> I was telling people I, I had my kids and they were being bad, and I was like, I'm gonna write a kids book and call it "Come Here, You Little Shit." <laughs> 
<laughs> Before we let you go, Mike, what one thing I did want to talk about a little bit more in more in depth is that your last fight against Eddie Alvarez, because that was we already saw what you were capable of in there, but we actually had Eddie Alvarez on the Mighty Cast before that fight. And can you kind of just go through that fight? Because it, it was so interesting because the first round, it, it looked a little bit like, you know, Eddie had a pretty good first round, landed a lot of shots. But that second round is where we really saw the unleashing of this almost final boss, Mike Perry, <laughs> bare knuckle. So so what was kind of going through your head in between rounds where you saw an opening that you were going to have in that second round to finish the fight? Um. Yeah, man, I think I I went out there knowing that uh, I was about to be hit. It's a bare knuckle fight. I was like preparing myself to uh, I figured Eddie was a little smaller than like, you know, my last opponent was a 185er who was big and we had a clause and, uh, you know, so the gaps were different. And then Eddie was a shorter guy. Uh, I thought, you know, my reach might touch him up a little differently. He moved pretty good uh, at, at first, but I also had my game plan of just keep putting pressure on, uh, try to shoulder roll some of the shots and and put that my gut, my body weight towards him and and really press him into the ropes at some point um, and get some shots off land, you know, short little cutters. Uh, but you know, penetrating shots. Like every shot I throw in a boxing ring is as hard as I can throw it. Like, cause I expect the same in return to you to hit me the same way. And, um, you know, the fact that he, he wobbled my leg once, like I, I had a little buckle in there after a, one of his left hooks. I was like, Hmm, that's that's weird. I think that was my first like warm up mentally, like when that that little buckle hit me mm. and I just shook. I just kind of shook and then fucking put my hands back up. <laughs> it's like, all right, bitch, here we go. Now I'm ready. <laughs> and, and you know, sometimes I got to try not to get hit first, but you know, he did all right. But if he, you know, hey, if they want to do it again, if they think he had enough success that he could maintained throughout a fight performance you know come on bro that was four minutes there was still six minutes regulation and i was looking to do damage and and at the end of the second i hit him a couple times and like his punches i started catching with the shoulder roll i was blocking shots with my shoulder turning i hit him with a couple nasty body shots that made him go and I was I was looking at him at the end of the second, like, yeah, bitch, I'm <laughs> figured you out. And then and then I'm standing there and I'm jumping up and down, and I'm like, Eddie's still sitting down. I'm on the line. I'm like ready to go. I make it my thing with those fights to be the one toeing the line. There's still 10 seconds left in the corner. And like, and also my coach, you know, when I went back to the corner after the first. He was telling me some shit that I needed to hear. I just kind of went out there and scrapped the first round and got took some hits because that's part of the game, and it added up. And then he's like, come on, slip off the side, get that up jab in there. He's he's moving his head under the jab with the left hook, so catch him underneath. And I was like, right, right, okay. And then I did that. Angles, offset, head movement, up jab. And then sure enough, in the second round, I'm jumping. I'm like, oh. What's going on? And, and, but you get it. You give no MVP. MVP hit me with a good one. That was a good one. It was a close fight. Yeah. Uh, see, see, the thing is, it's funny because like MVP, you wore his ass down, down. Like the first the round, he was happy. Like he was like, oh, he, oh ha, he was moving around. <laughs> then the second, the third, and then the sudden death. The whole every single round, the demeanor change when you fight MVP, right? Where I don't think. Eddie and Luke didn't get the opportunity to make it to the third, the fourth, even if there was a sudden death round, right? So 
I, I feel like all those fights that you had, the ones that like the MVP, Eddie and Luke, they're all different and they all show different body body demeanor. You know what I mean? So that Eddie fight was was badass. And if you guys do do a second one, I can't wait to watch it because it's going to be another banger. Another banger. Another banger baby. Free check. Free <laughs> Easy work. Same as last time. I call it easy work. Let me go out there and beat you, beat my hands up with your face and beat your hands up with my face. It don't matter. I'm about that. No, and, and you, you had some I interesting call outs right, right after that fight. Um, kind of went went to Twitter and mm. and calling out a lot of people. Uh, it, 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 what you mentioned, April. Is there is there any opponents? Obviously, we don't want to spoil too much. But is there is there anyone that you're kind of looking forward to getting to, to fight in bare knuckle one day? Ugh, yeah. Um, if it if it comes to that, and like you know, Feldman, he don't play no game. So when he calls these people, uh, they like what he has to say. And, uh, you know, hey, it, I can't let there be no excuses. If they're showing up for a check, that's on them. I'm I'm coming for your neck. <laughs> that's you know? what you said. You said he came for a check. I want to break his neck. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling, that's man. Right. I'm telling kids book. I mean, obviously, you're going to have to, uh, you know, tone it down. You know, with all the neck breaking and come here, bitch, and give me your little shit. But I think you can rhyme. You know, you say you got the treasure chest. I, I love it. I I'll buy a book from you and read it to my kids. I'll read it to my kids' kids. There's my money plan right there, bro. I'm going to publish a children's book. Like, uh, <laughs> like the movie, uh, like the movie Elf. Oh, I love it. I love it. Michael, you got anything left for oh. this man? I know initially when you presented him with the fighter of the year, okay, maybe maybe I laughed a little bit, but let's do it proper right now. T take out that SB. Let's let's present him once again, the 2023 <coughs> fighter of the year. Yeah, go go and get that and show it off to him. We're we're gonna actually ship this to you in Florida, Mike. So you're gonna. No, we're not. We gotta get it made. We gotta get more. Money. Don't don't be don't be trying to skip my shit away, Michael. Give your own shit away. I earned this motherfucker. You understand? <laughs> but. C congratulations to Mike Perry for winning the Mighty Award for Fighter of the Year 2023. Woo! Mike Perry, this bad boy is yours. When we do, if the budget Wait, and this, let me see. And I can't see it. Oh, you let can't me see it. Oh, Put it in go. the front. There you go. Right oh, here. is that the uh, is that the Super Bowl trophy? No, nah, it's Espy. Espy. It looks like a Super Bowl trophy. Yeah, it kind of does. It kind of does. But hopefully, you know, this show keeps taking off and we uh, get some actually uh, a good budget. We can uh, make some. And when we do, we will send you one. I promise. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Now I just need an award from John Jones. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and next time. Mike Tyson. You saw that thing? The guy had the tattoo of Mike Tyson. And he's like, Mike, can I get a picture? And Mike was like. And he just walked away. <laughs> yeah. Damn, bro. Fuck oh, up, fuck. Bro. Well, Mike, uh, thank you so much for joining us on the Mighty Cast. We truly appreciate you. One last thing. Is there anything you want to let the uh, audience know? How can they find you? This is your opportunity to give them your social media. Tell them. Yes. Yes, everybody. Thank you uh, for watching the great Demetrius Johnson's Mighty Cast. And with... Uh, starring Platinum Mike Perry this episode. And uh, I am on Platinum Perry on Twitter, at Platinum Perry, which is P-L-A-T-I-N-U-M. A lot of stupid people don't know how to spell platinum. It's platinum. <laughs> Just saying. It's at Platinum Perry. And I am on Platinum Mike Perry at Instagram. So check me out on there, man. I'm always trying to, and I, and I got a new car. I'm going to make some cool new TikToks. Uh, my TikTok's not great. I don't even, oh, I think I'm, um, what is my TikTok? Platino De Niro or uh, Platino Poppy, like Champagne Poppy Drake. Ah. But I'm Platino <laughs> Poppy <laughs> on TikTok. <laughs> and I'm going to make some cool TikToks with my new car and shit. I love it, man. I love it. Well, once again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you to our guest, Mike Perry. And thank you to my co-host, host, Michael Wandover. This is the end of the Mighty Cats. Appreciate you guys. Make sure you like, subscribe. Also, hit the bell to know when we drop another beggar. We out. Oosh.